go. I am back at the Bronx Zoo. All right, right here at the front. I'm in parking lot C. See see where I'm at. Hey everybody, Tom here for Tom's Road Trip and I am in Bronx, New York today. And it is Memorial Day. So it's gonna be very, very busy. And I'm back at the Bronx Zoo. I was here last year and actually ran out of time before I was able to see and do everything because this place is so large with the indoor building habitats. So first thing first, I am heading to the back of the zoo and I'm going to be doing the Asian monorail since that was the big area that I missed this past year. So being, I was here last year uh, and I released my video in a two-parter. I'm going to continue on and, can, and consider this a part three of the Bronx Zoo. So if you missed the first two episodes, I'm going to put a link in the description down below so you can see the first two parts. So once I head there, going to get started. All right, I fast track hooked it back here to Wild Asia. This is where the Asian monorail is. Also the Jungle World building that I did last year. However, I kind of went through it very, very fast because I was on very limited time. So I'm going to do the Asian monorail and then go check out Jungle World again so I can actually enjoy it in there. And then we'll check out the uh, reptile building because that's the other thing that I missed last year. It's a Bengal Express monorail coming up. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. Only place to see some of these animals. All right, here we go. Just opened. We're getting ready to open, it opens at 10.30. Alright, here comes the monorail. Here we go. This will be fun. Good morning, Bronx Zoo and Explorers. Welcome aboard the Wild Beast Monorail. My name is Sophia and I'll be your guide and driver today. You ready, Alice? I will be your guide. You'll see our field scientist. It's raining. As we cross over the Bronx River, we'll be transported to Asia as if by magic. Is it by magic? All right. <laughs> Just like that, we transported to the wild places of Asia and traveled 7,000 miles. Cool. Look at that. Out here, in the front, you'll see four different types of animals. Oh, wow. Four types of animals. You like to see the little animals. They have about a white belly and a tan back. One of the animals are the female of the 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 if you see it right here, this deer would spot. That's one of our access deer. Access deer are very unique. Deers can choose because unlike other deer, they can see your spots around the tree. That's a free box. Yeah, it's a good one, right? They're mature. Oh, that's cool. So they keep your like, white spots oh, nice. on them. At this time, we're going to listen to a WCS conservation story. The rhinos you see, Jonathan's left in the tire. Hi, farmers in Indonesia, this post is a Yeah, Ella, you like it so far, sweetie? Ella, what do you think, girl? You would do it? Farmers in Indonesia, look, come up with the protection. This year, many different ways to farm. Look at that. That's a good looking deer. 
summer of the trees come around the corner. Elephants do not like children. And leave the farms alone. You want to send the farmer and the animals to share the habitat. Okay, we'll be stopped and then we'll switch, okay? That large champagne colored deer that we saw in the past called the Deep Blue Plank Club, that was one of our factories here. Factories here are those two champagne over here at the jet. And in the wild, they were thought to be extinct, however, after 40 years in Afghanistan, one of our wild researchers spotted something. Am I left? In this meadow today, it is too early in the morning for them. They didn't want to come out yet. We have our Mongolian wild horses. Although you won't be able to see them right now, I'll tell you more about them. Mongolian wild horses compared to the domestic horses that we know and love have shorter legs than the top of your bills. They normally have an abrupt mane and they're missing their forelock. A forelock is a piece of hair that is draped over their forehead. Horses didn't want to come out. Here at the Bronx Zoo, we've had our Mongolian wild horses, or Shabalski horses, horses yeah. since 1902. Since then, we successfully have had over 50 bulls born right here. In our first oh, yeah. we had two bulls, and you'll be able to tell oh. them because they'll have a shaggy hair coming from their belly. There's a still shaggy hair baby. We also have more what do you males have and the rest of Here's Jonathan Black. Tell you more about them. We got a look. Just imagine there's a bunch of horses out here. Got to use your imagination on these guys. Yeah, but see, a lot of the animals are inside, so they're sleeping, so. Yeah, they should be in the lawn. Oh, yeah. I know. It's the wall and the... Yeah. Are you able to see them today? We went to a party last night, so they're not out yet this morning. The giraffes are up, but they're not here. That's interesting. One thing we come around to the next battle, though, we'll be on the lookout for another herd of animals. These are the largest wild cattle. And these are our three hours. Did she really? Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, wow. And here's some facts about their size. A man can stand as tall as six feet and can be as long as ten feet. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's pretty big. And they have a long Oh, like little ones. One thing you can notice about them is that they have amazing horns. Ella, did you see that one? And Gower is known that in the wild they're able to fight about anything, even a tiger. The largest threat that our Gower face in the wild is over farming of their natural areas as well as catching the seeds of small wild cattle. Oh, there's two or three. Yeah, I said I'm just waiting for one yeah. to get out. Once again, right here, folks, you might be able to see the gower right here. Whoa! Nah! 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 Yeah, Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to hear a lot of the narration. Because when it's not loud enough. Siberian tiger and his big, 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 big
This is going to be tough trying to find these things. These tigers. Tigers are solitary creatures, which means they tend to live alone because they're highly territorial. That's why you only see one out at a time. If you see, he's right up there taking a cat nap. In the wild, tigers eat wild pigs and deer, and they've been known to force them to a meal up to 40 pounds of meat. That's the oh, you're right there. Oh, oh, there he is. I don't think you can do it. 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 I don't think you can do Right now they're up at the top, but at the end of the day they like to hang out right here against the fence line. And we're now coming upon the back half of that first meadow where we saw a lot of our deer and a If you're able to spot towards that fence line, there's another one of our stars. It smells like Ella's room. Ew. 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 It smells like Ella's room. I'm going to tell you about our people. I'm Our people are oh. have full range of our farms oh. here. And so you can spot them almost anywhere. The males are the peacocks, the females are the hens. And when they get together, they be yeah, that's a female peacock. Oh, the little baby deer. At the end of any phase, they're this next animal went in very well with the muddy environment that it likes to call home. The head of you see what it looks like a pig with tusks that erupt yeah. from its uh, from its snout and turn backwards to its eyes. You've spotted a babarusha. Where's that? My camp. Oh. Did you spot it, Alex? What's over there? If you look right down here, we'll have a little more adult animals. We will be slowing down both because uh, there's a peacock playing chicken with us at the moment. Uh, there's a peacock on the track, everybody. Uh -oh. In the wild, male tabarushas will use their tusks to attract a female mate. And in the second meadow, I believe we should have two females out, though I'm not able to spot them at the moment. <laughs> Peacocks. So yeah, unfortunately there is no guarantee we will see all the animals. There we go. An elephant Why do you put hay on himself? One thing you might be able to notice about Patty is her amazing trunk. An elephant trunk can have about 40,000 muscles in them, and that is more than the human body. Is there water? Another thing about this is that she has a finger like adaptation at the end of it. She uses this to pick up delicate things, such as a singular blade of grass or an egg without cracking it. Look at his tushy. And as we say goodbye to Patty, we'll be saying hello to another large land mammal. She's coming right up towards us right now. And ask folks, please keep your hands inside the park. This is Priya. She's one of our greater one horned rhinoceroses right here at the Bronx Zoo. Rhinoceros? 
If you want to, he's inside the mud wall. He'll be able to see yes, Priya's almost two year old son. And his is Patrick. Playing in the mud. Playing in the mud. Playing in the mud. It's very a natural like, looking. All the trees and everything. Basically, got to be here at the right time to see the animals. And there's still going to be no guarantee. Tough to hear, get their names from the little tough of hair that they're 
found on their forehead. You can like more than one. What she said? Like I said, folks, it might be hard to spot, but if you look right up here towards the first line, you might be able to see one. It's true. Like and as we round this bend, if you look back through the trees, you get a second glimpse at Patty. It's hard to hide your elephant, folks. All right, let's see what else we want to say. Yeah, what do you want to say next? Yeah, we'll we'll at this point, our tour will be crossing back over the river and we'll be at our highest elevation, to sitting around 35 feet in the air. Ooh, yes, the river is in water, but it's very lucky to search for wildlife everywhere. And here you might be able to spot some fish, migrating birds, ducks, and turtles. Do you see some fish? Next, we'll be on the lookout. Two animals that love this rocky terrain. We have our marble goat and our Himalayan bar. Are you a baby or a big girl? As we come around, folks, you might be able to spot the bar. Did you like this hat? Did you like to go to there up there on that hill, folks? If you're able to spot them. Uh, oh, here we go. A male horse will grow as long as it takes inches. One way you'll be able to spot a horse horse will grow as long as it takes inches. One way you'll be able to spot a horse will grow is by their spiraling horns. And in the wild, they've been known to be able to jump up to four feet in the air without a running start. There's no need that is. If you look, you'll see them right up there, folks. Those are some of our And amongst them, you might be able to get a spot out of their dish. That's right, folks. Baby goat is also named a kid. If you can't get a good look at them now, don't worry, folks. We're around this kid. Then you might be able to see a better look at them. And now we're slowing down, but if you're not without good reason, once we pass this. We ask that you keep your voices down not to spook our nine-year-old red panda, and his name is Linus. So unfortunately, they're all right back in here. In the fall, red pandas are referred to as Hanpo, which roughly translates Mommy to firefox. Pandas. And in China, they're referred to as tiny bear cats. And if you look right back through this fence, folks, you'll be able to get a good look at those markboard goats. Oh, there, there we go. go. There we go. Ooh. Although our red pandas share a similar diet of bamboo with giant pandas, they're actually not related. And red pandas are more closely related to a spunk weasel or raccoon. If you'd like to see more of our red pandas here in the Bronx Zoo, you can take a short walk to the Himalayan Highlands. There you'll also be able to see some of Asia's large wildcats, the snow leopards. Ooh, yeah. 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 I'm glad I got to see them. As we round this bed, folks, our journey will be coming to an end. You've heard from some of our experts in the field. Keep us at home and use some of your own observational skills today. All right, well, I'm sorry I didn't get to see more animals, but, you know, that's a chance you take. As a reminder, we're through the point of this yes, for Wildlife Conservation Society, in addition to running four other parks besides the Bronx Zoo here, we have the Park Zoo, the Prospect Park Zoo, the Queen Zoo, and the Hewlett Park Zoo. We're going to continue right after this. So, as you see, I am wearing my Bronx Zoo hat. Everyone is going to continue right after this. So as you see, I am wearing my Bronx Zoo hat that I purchased here last year, so I don't have to worry about getting a hat. I right, already got it. All right, we're going to see some Waldrop. Is it related to the Ibis? I believe this is the only time I've ever seen this type of bird. I don't even think I saw these last year. I said I was rushing around so much. Always enjoy seeing new species. What all the zoos I've been to.
It's becoming less and less rare seeing something new for the first time. All right, so I purchased a refillable drink bottle because I honestly couldn't remember which one I got last year or I would have brought it with me also. But you get this wristband, so it's free refills for the day of purchase. So it works out good anyway. $13.99 plus tax. All right, since this zoo is so large, you do have a shuttle system that goes throughout, drops you off in different areas. This is an additional cost unless you have the all-inclusive ticket or you are a zoo member. All right, so we got the African Trail. Now I did this last year, but I kind of rushed through it. So I'm gonna start here, then I'm gonna get over to the bears. Uh, do Baboon Reserve and just check out the bears because, again, I had to rush through this. All right, we got some Nyala. I love these signs. Like their nice white stripes on the side. Reminds me of my favorite hoofed animal, which would be the bongo. Really cool looking animals. Yes, yeah, so the Nyala have a very expansive habitat. Lots and lots of space. So there's a difference between the female Nyala and the male. An African lion. Gabriela. Hey, what's that over there? Where's the bongo? Is that the bongo? Yeah. So male's lonely at the top. Here we go. Living up to its name. The lion is just lying on the ground. Just got a very brief view of the tiger. Just got a better view of the lion. Let's have some natural stone or rocks. As you walk along the pathways. So the Bronx Zoo is the largest of the four zoos that are part of the Wildlife Conservation Society and there is also one aquarium. I have done all of the zoos including the, the Queen Zoo, Prospect Park Zoo, and the Central Park Zoo. I will also be doing the New York State Aquarium. That is the aquarium that is part of the Wildlife Conservation Society. This is the largest zoo by landmass and the largest metropolitan zoo in the United States. So I'm veering off the African Trail and I'm gonna do the Samba Village. There's also the Baboon Reserve. Like a lot of monkeys. Also I found two peacocks on the loop. And you got these other animals in here. Not quite sure what they are yet. We got a village burger. So we got Gelda Reserve. Let's go through all this area here. We got Fossil Dig. The early Boar Skull. Early human skull. Of course, these are reproductions. Get parallel lives. A common ancestor, it looks like. Four, 14 million years ago, get early pre human skull. You can see these from one million years ago to today. DNA. 
got the monkey skulls. Mommy. Got this peacock up on the roof. You can hear them periodically throughout the zoo. They are free roaming. All right, so you got the galatas. Hopefully I'm saying it correctly. The Galatas and their relatives. Oh, so we got Nubian Ibex. That was the other long haired animals that I wasn't sure what they were. There we go. So Nubian Ibex. Got a lot better view of the monkeys in the other viewing area. Very aggressive. You got several peacocks in there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Those are not peacocks. What are they? Those are monkeys! Those are monkeys. Those are monkeys. Audrey, there's monkeys. Yeah. Brown bear. Oh boy, got some brown bears. Grizzly bears are brown bears. There's a brown bear. Grizzly bear right there. <gasps> oh, got the second one right here. <coughs> Having a bear nap. The bear. See, last year I only got a brief glimpse of them up above. Very nice. Look at those big giant paws. Also, there's other vantage point. I see three now. <laughs> He's got his one back leg up against the wall. Trying to be comfortable. Our rescue bears. All rescued after conflicts with humans. So more than likely what happened is humans started feeding these bears and the bears became accustomed to getting food from people. Yeah, they got a cave to be in. You be on top of this big giant rock formation. Brown bears, expert foragers in your neighborhood. I mean, not my neighborhood because we don't have brown bears in Florida. We've got black bears. But this is additional habitat for the grizzlies or brown bears. So you can go all the way up there. It's got bears of the world. The American black bears. Polar bears, Andean bears, sloth bears, Asian black bears, giant pandas, and sun bears. And I've had the opportunity to see every one of these types of bears. And brown bears are good at getting food. That's important. See, humans just go to the grocery store. Bears, they actually gotta search for the food. All right, since I missed this area last year also, I'm going to take this trail that's just next to the brown bear habitat. You see some dole. He's right up there on the rock. Yep. Who rides all that? Hey, there's somebody there. You notice that? Sorry. No, good. 
This is the Dole's Habitat. Ah, I see him up on the rocks. There we go. Assuming I lost track of him for a second. So doles are endangered. And there are many faces of wild dogs. The gray wolf and fennec fox, super tall maned wolf, super short bush dogs. Then you got jackals, coyotes, and dingoes. Right, so show you the map again so you see right where I'm at. Right by the bears and the doles. Then I'm gonna backtrack. They go up to the budgie landing, which is brand new. And check out the mouse house that I missed also. And there's a world of reptiles that I also missed last year. We got red crowned crane. Spread right across this pond, you got them right here. Another one kind of right behind the tree. Got a nice pond here, you got some ruddy duck, canvas back, hooded Marangastner, lesser scop, wood duck, and common golden eye. There's several turtles. I am enjoying, so I need to rest. Yeah, Ducky's just flying and landing in. <laughs> Got dabbling and diving ducks. Dabbling means on top of the water. Divers means diving under the water. Lots of turtles along the logs. And most of the ducks are towards the back. Lots more turtles. This is one of the trams you can take. I'll come back around. The grizzlies have moved. Yeah, bear's climbing up. So I'm saying they can go up high. Up on these rocks. Oh. oh, there we go. So can anybody get a good view of me? Sitting nicely. Oh. Oh, the other bear went upside a cave. Right up here. Went inside the cave. Oh, no, 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 never mind, never mind, never mind, bear's out. There we go. All right, reptiles. I had several of my subscribers upset with me last year when I didn't get to go inside here, so gonna do it now. That's saving wildlife near and far. First up, we get Eastern Hellbender. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's got lots of fishy friends here too. Got a dwarf crocodile. Let's see a tail. The head. Oh, we got a pretty cool looking habitat. You can see he's mostly under the water. Not sure most of him is. You can see his feet are touching the bottom, and so is his tail. So typically with alligators and crocodiles, if you just see their head poking up out of the water, that means either their hind legs or their tail is on the bottom. And a Bhutan or Gray's monitor. Reptile detectives. Big, big, big Since we don't like bugs very much, we probably like him. I like the habitat. Yeah. I don't know. Have seen anything Yeah. Ooh, he's climbing the rocks. I see that. 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 I Not everybody likes snakes. But snakes, they help out. Keeping nature in balance. Some of the snakes they got. And threats to snakes. It's a giant Burmese python. Wow. This type of snake is a very, very invasive to the Everglades in South Florida. Most of them were released as pets. Several of them were accidentally released during Hurricane Andrew. Got out from a pet store that was decimated during a hurricane. And since there's no natural predators for them down there, they eat up all the native wildlife and grow enormously large. Got a meticulated python. Also a very, very large type of snake. Similar in size to the Burmese python. Got a hog island boa. This snake's habitat. Ooh. That is a nice looking snake. Okay, so we have a smooth sided toad and a green anaconda. And that is one huge toad. Wow. Very, very impressive. You see the green anaconda underneath the water. Looks like he's just got his nostrils up out of the water. These guys are excellent swimmers. Let's look at this giant tube. I got a giant vine snake. Several people were standing here trying to find them. And one lady happened to notice them. He's right at the top. You can barely see him. But he's, he's, he's here, a very, very skinny snake. So there you can see him. So most of them is hidden behind all of this. Maybe 
Oh, you see his head. From his head, you see a lot of more of his body over here. Very, very long snake. He's a Bronger's Buzz Pit Viper and White Lip Island Pit Viper. Very cool looking habitat for this animal. This is a White Lip Island Pit Viper. Looking all over, I do not see this snake. So he's hiding really, really well. Got a Kenhazi Sprite Dude. It's extinct in the wild. And then there's one trying to blend in behind the lead. Yeah, really, really little struggies. They're extinct. You can only see them here. Yeah, these little things because are extinct, little. extinct in the wild. Look, right there, there. So zoos no, the zoos are keep the them only safe. place, only place you can see these things. No. See some frogs. Got diamond poison frog, Brazilian poison frog, green and black poison frog, the less poison frog. Reticulated glass frog, variable poison frog, yellow banded poison frog, Panamanian golden frog, and a golden poison frog. Frequently. 
I mean, not like they're walking down the street in my neighborhood or anything like that, but, you know, pretty, pretty much any body of water is going to have one of these in it. Got yeah, Chinese alligator. They are cute! Got the one in the water. I really like their habitat. Purposely mimics it. Got a common flat lizard and Egyptian tortoise. Egyptian tortoise. Very, very easy to see. The habitat's pretty nice. I was looking all over. I happened to see him on the wall. For some reason, I was expecting to be a larger lizard than this. speckled rattlesnake. So it's probably there in the back. Let's just give you an idea what they look like. We've got rhinoceros viper and my favorite type of snake, the kaboon viper. Yes, kaboon viper is my absolute favorite. It's because they look like two different types of snakes. I mean, it's actually two different stakes here. Two different kaboom vipers. I just mean that their that their pattern is completely uh, interesting. Where it looks like it's two different types of snakes. Pancake tortoise. Mozambique girdled lizard. Look at this thing. Very nice habitat. I can see the lizard. There is the lizard. Oh, another person pointed out the pancake tortoise. I was expecting to be up high. Uh, I was not expecting to be up high. Because he's up, he's up on the top of the rocks. So he must have climbed up the sticks here. I was expecting to be down low. It's just the opposite. So there's lizards there, and tortoise there. An Ethiopian mountain viper. This guy's really easy to see. He's right here on the bottom. We got Taiwan mountain pit viper. The Philippine pit viper. Now, so usually the habitats are pretty hard to find the snakes. I do see one of them here at the bottom. I think from the coloration, this is probably going to be the Philippine pit viper. So I'm just not seeing a Taiwan mountain pit viper. Got emerald tree boa. Now they have a secondary snake in here that's not listed. Because this is definitely not an emerald tree boa. 
because Emerald Tree Boa is right up here. It's curled up. So if any of you know what type of snake this is, leave a timestamp comment down below. Next door we got a green tree python. Also very nice habitat. This guy's right here. Oh, we got a second one. There we go. There we go. The Indian Cobra. And can snakes be charmed? More times than not, anytime you see people that are so-called snake charming with a little flute and the snakes coming out of the basket, all those snakes have had their fangs removed. That looks like mommy. I'll bite you. So even though they're kind of being charmed with the flute, they're no danger to the snake handler. All right, the most dangerous snake. Kaboon Viper number one, Eastern Dowback Rattlesnake. That's a snake from my home state of Florida. That King Cobra. And they are snake eaters. Snakes that eat other snakes. And they got the best nest. Yeah, part of them's inside this log here. See its tail. Fantastic habitat right here. Got a snouted cobra. Yeah. Oh, looks like he's got a regular nose. Trying to see if there's all one snake. Looks like there's two of them in here. Oh, because I see two tails. But man, this habitat is fantastic, also. Got Komodo dragon. Here at the top. Oh, log. That Mang Mountain Viper. Now seen on the zoo. <laughs> I was looking around trying to find it. Right here. Blended in so well. And she's a northern copperhead. Timber rattlesnake. And black rat snake. So lots of crevices and stuff for snakies to be. But I see the one snake right here. It's the black rat snake. Alright, so black rat snake's here. Got the other snake here on the top. You can barely see them. And Northern Copperhead is down in this little crevice. Another lady pointed him out. I couldn't see him. Alright, I can see a giant horned lizard. Common Chuckwalla. Baja Blue Rock Lizard and a Gila Monster. Saying some like it hot. Here we go. Giant Horned Lizard. Gila Monsters down in the back. Really like this habitat. I got another lizard right here. Looks like a common chuckwalla. Yeah, really, really 
really cool habitats. Bronx Zoo is absolutely world class. Got turtles. Permanent attachment. Giant snake neck turtle. Red bellied short neck turtle. And a spotted pond turtle. Them. That's what he looks like. So unfortunately, you don't see him. 
There we go. And he had a roofed turtle. Big one. Talking a black turtle. And Roddy Allen snake neck turtle. Lots and lots and lots of turtles. Turtles. Okay, giant South American river turtle. Red-headed Amazon river turtle. Northern Cayman Lizard. Oh, fantastic habitat. Of course, you can see the Cayman Lizard. Turtles on the bottom. I'm trying to see the other type of turtle. You see this one here. I see a second of the lizards. Hi. Hi. What's in here? I don't see anything in here. Oh, on the bottom. There we go. There's the other turtle. There's a larger there on the left and a smaller one on the right. All right, so I'm back outside again. I am very, very happy I got to see the reptile building this time since I missed it last year. Hopefully some of you enjoy snakes. I know not everybody does. But they had lots of other cool critters in there. There we got the mouse house. All about the mouse. We got that Dagoo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, they are so cute! They kind of look like large gerbils. Yeah, just large gerbils, man. That's what they look like to me. Because they got that gerbilist looking tail on them. They're so cute! A zebra mouse. Look <laughs> at the perfect name. Zebra mouses. Oh my gosh. These mice are adorable. Look at how cute they are. Oh. Got northern tree shrew. It resembles a, a smaller squirrel. It's really cute, also. The tropical forests. Got black and rufous giant elephant shrew. Looks like they have a double habitat. Ah, there we go. There we go. Very nice. So oh, yeah, I got that little long nose. Go next door. Oh, I love the little nose. <laughs> oh my gosh, all oh, the little cute little nose. Got a European harvest mouse. Ooh, lots, of little, lots of little mousies. Oh my gosh, look how cute this is. Ready to climb up on the grass. Look 
like an African pygmy mouse. So some of these animals are not as plentiful as some of the others. So I'm not trouble finding one. Oh, wait, 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 never mind. Right in between the log here. There we go. Look at cute little mousies also. Oh, we got chinchilla. These poor little critters are used to make coats and stuff, or they used to be anyway. Luckily, wearing real fur has fallen out of fashion. It used to be all the rage in the 1920s through the, the 50s. That's a really cute animal. Got rodents in residence. Got red rock agati. This is a fantastic habitat. Look at him right here. Oh, wow. Kind of looks like a guinea pig. Sort of. Really big. We've got Northern Luzon Giant Cloud Rat. Wow, that is one giant rat. Good thing you see it up in the clouds, man. Oh, would not want a rat like this in my house. No, thank you. Oh, yes. Very nice. So this is a double-sided habitat. So I didn't see him in here. But there's a doorway that connects the two sides. A feather tail glider. Right there. Yes, they oh, are gliding all over the place. These things are really, really super fast. It's a feather tail glider. Very, very, very fast. Look at that. It is zipping all around. Very, very small going in and outside the box. So this was another area that I missed last year due to time constraints. Unfortunately, towards the end, the light was so low, like I said, I brought my smaller camera instead of my larger camera because I'm having issues with it. It's gotta go in for repair. So the smaller of my two cameras doesn't do very good with low light. What was the reason that I purchased the larger camera? So I wasn't able to show you some of the smaller animals or, or some of the other more exotic type mice and rats towards the end just because the lighting was so low. My camera couldn't pick it up. All right, all new this year, we got Budgie Landing. It's gonna be inside this new tent building. All right, so this is a separate ticketed attraction. $5 per person. You get one seed stick. This is not included as the, one of the star attractions that my ticket that I purchased gets me into. So, five bucks. All right, so I got my seed stick. Got budgie etiquette. 
So you gotta see a brand new exhibit. Look at this nice hard sided tent. The buggies are basically uh, parakeets. That's what they are known as in America, basically. And they are one of the number one birds in the pet trade. And budgies or parakeets come in the three main color ranges, either blue, green, or white. See a budgie yawning? Look at its neighbors. Just like we humans, and budgies are seed eaters. A lot of scope of colors. See, someone got lucky and got a budgie off of the tree. Get friendly flocks. Budgie's a parakeet is a parrot. Basically, you just gotta hold out your seed stick and hopefully a bird will come and land. And some people are lucky they got their budgie. Yeah, you can see them all over the fence. That's got the cool air blowing in. Trying to tempt a budgie. Come on, take my seed stick. Here we go. Is a budgie here feeding onto my stick right here. Oh, oh. What a beautiful bird. There we go. I'm right out of my seed stick. Yeah, so they use their little, their sharp beaks, or strong beaks rather. And they crack the seeds open. You see them dry, drop the outer shell of the seed. Yeah, very nice. Very pretty birds. Had parakeets all throughout my lifetime for the most part. Don't have any at the moment, but you know, as a kid we had them. Very friendly bird. I was trying to turn the stick over and I scared this budgie. Laying it back on the tree branch. So once I turned the stick over, hop right back up on it. Got Dexter's beaks. All right, so I just asked if there is 1,500 budgies in this big tent here. That is a lot of birds. Now they also have access to go in this area right here in the back. So not all those 1,500 birds are flying around and landing on trees. There's quite a few of the birds behind the scenes also. I know, they're not really coming down. Trash can here to dispose of your budgie sticks. Alright, near the budgie house I see some giraffes. Always enjoy seeing these long necked animals. Absolutely.
See some African painted dogs. Love the coloration of these animals. And it's my dogs back at home and my cats. I'm a long way away from them. This beautiful coloration of these animals. Found the pathway. I see another African painted dog having a little nap. Got one of the free roaming peacocks. In case you weren't aware of it, peacocks regrow their tail feathers each year. I like their version of antlers. Very, very pretty birds. Oh yeah, here we go, Grevy Zebra. Yeah, plain zebra and mountain zebra. Here we go. Wow, I can't believe it. Usually, but not always, probably a good 99% of the time, every time I come up to the zebras and any zoo, I inevitably end up with a hind view of these guys. So that's kind of what the the ongoing joke is. I don't purposely wait until the zebras are showing their derrieres. It just completely by coincidence. Much rather see front view than the uh, hind end. Always enjoy the zebras. I actually got to feed these guys in one of the uh, drive through safaris that I've done. I don't actually remember which one it was. But they usually warn you not to try to hand feed them because they can bite. Very nice. All right, everybody, so this is going to wrap up my visit to the Bronx Zoo in Bronx, New York. This is a, a basically a, a part three to my two-parter from last year. I tried to show you everything that I missed last year. A uh, few animals I missed during the Asian monorail, but nothing can be done about that. It's just whether you're there at the right time. So leave some comments down below what your favorite animal was that I showed you today. Had a fantastic time. It was really, really nice to be back here at the Bronx Zoo. Fantastic facility. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, I go to places like this, aquariums, theme parks, amusement parks, quirky roadside attractions. I also occasionally go to uh, state and national parks all around the United States. Upload new videos every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you everybody for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!